today, though, we see an increase in cloud temperatures largely should hold up, though, around uh, 8 or 9 degrees in some spots. Yes, it all changes as we go through the night tonight and into tomorrow because barely a cloud in the sky, a cloud out towards the north, you can see the oranges on the map just showing you. energy stored in these masses will always be greater than those of, say, comets or stars. But what I think is more intriguing here is the biological approach to energy. The fact that the human body is extremely inefficient in its use of energy compared to modern machines makes them a useful object to test these assumptions. Almost correct. Um, popular thinking tends to approach energy solely as a non-abstract concept, like electricity or warmth. But energy is everywhere. A fit human body can produce many times the equivalent of one horsepower, which I believe is around 747 watts. Uh, but one can only maintain this amount of power for a few seconds. When the body engages in kinetic activity for several hours, like walking, dancing, maximum output drops to about 200 watts automatically. Uh, so, considering this flexibility, that the human body is uh, about the most energy efficient machine one can imagine. agree with you on the fact that we shouldn't ignore these types of transformations. They're everywhere. The energy is everywhere. Take me over.
conservation of energy is a mathematical consequence of translational symmetry of time, a property of most phenomena below the cosmic scale that makes them independent of their locations on the time coordinate, but differently today and tomorrow are physically indistinguishable. <laughs> So does our civilization. It needs energy to run and progress. Today, we extract this energy from fossil fuels and other more sustainable sources. Some people might feel the transition to using more sustainable forms of energy is taking too long. But we're bound by the restrictions of nature as well. So what we need to do is appreciate the small steps. The most steps, important steps, thing to remember here is, is energy can't be created or destroyed. It can only be transferred or change form. So kinetic energy from windmills, for example, uh, can provide electrical energy, which can become radiant energy in the form of light or sound, which in turn could become kinetic energy again, a, a loop, if you will. The question remains, how do we generate the energy we need in the next 10 to 50 years? 50 years. Give me some trouble. 